In this video, I'm going to show you what's inside a gas water heater, and I'm going to show you right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years, and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. So I know we're talking about what's inside a gas water heater, but we're actually going to start right here on the outside at the gas control valve. The reason being, the gas control valve is the piece on the outside that actually penetrates the tank of a water heater because it's got the thermostat on the inside. That's what tells this when to kick on, when to allow gas to go down to the burner assembly. Now I've got other videos where I've shown how to take out and put in the burner assembly, so I'm not going to do all that on this video, but the gas control valve, this is the brains behind the water heater. I'd like to say thank you to Bradford White for opening up this water heater for us. This makes it where we can literally show you what's on the inside of the tank, the burner assembly, and the whole nine yards without having to just kind of guess and describe it to you. Since they open this up, we can actually show you the inside of it and show you everything that we're talking about. So we're going to do that right now. First of all, the thermostat tells the gas control valve we need to heat the water up. And what it does is the thermostat kicks the gas control valve on and adds more gas to the burner assembly and heats up the water. Now it does it by heating up the water on the bottom of the tank just like it would a pot that you set on a gas stove. But what's neat about it is there's a hole right in the middle. This is the flue. This is where the burnt gas goes out. Now the neat thing about it is the way that it's made, the gas goes up and moves around and it keeps this inner tube hot. So it heats the water all the way up. And I like these little fins that they put on it. That makes the heat kick out where it actually heats it up more. Whenever you call for hot water and you turn on hot water at a faucet, what it does, this is the cold water inlet tube. So at the top, this is where your cold water hooks up. And what it does is it lets the cold water in and it comes almost all the way to the bottom of the tank. The reason it does that, that's where the burner is. That's where it's going to get hot. So the cold water at the bottom is going to get heated up. And as that water gets hotter, it's going to rise to the top. Another thing I like about these Bradford White Defender water heaters is on the cold inlet side down at the bottom, they've got ports cut in the tube. So that water sprays out and helps rinse out the bottom of the tank. That is a really neat thing because one of the big things that people tend not to do when they get a water heater is flush it once a year. This helps keep the calcium and magnesium moving around. That way when you do go to flush it, you can rinse it out a whole lot easier. On the back side here, you've got the anode rod. And what I like about the Bradford White water heaters is the anode rod and the hot water outlet are the same thing. Meaning where you tie on up the top to get your hot water out, that is attached to your anode rod that comes down and has two holes in the top. So when you get water out of a hot water heater, you're literally drawing it off the very top. It's really neat because I actually got to go up to Grand Rapids and go through Bradford White's iTech training. And what's really neat about it is your anode rod is sacrificial. It's made of magnesium or aluminum and it's a sacrificial rod. Meaning over the course of about the first year of the life of the water heater, any little pinholes, cracks, anything at all, any breaks that may need addressing on the inside of the water heater, the sacrificial anode rod will dissolve and go plug that hole. An anode rod is a good thing to look at after one year on replacing on your water heater. It's actually going to help make the life of your water heater even longer. Changing out an anode rod is something a lot of people can call a plumber to do. But depending on how yours is installed, it may be something that you can do yourself. If you look right here, this is the foam insulation. Your water heater tank is actually here and your casing is on the outside. Like I said, thanks for Bradford White for cutting this open. Now you can see how thick this insulation is. The good thing about that is when this water in here is hot, it's not hot on the outside. And this helps keep it hot so that your water heater is not kicking on continuously and constantly burning gas trying to keep that water hot. Once it gets hot, insulated as well as it is, it'll stay hot for quite a while. The only other thing on the water heater really that you may ever need to change is the TMP valve. And the TMP penetrates inside too because it has a temperature and pressure sensor in it. 
And what it does, the spring is set for the pressure and the temperature is the rod inside so that if it gets too hot, it kicks open and lets water come out. And what this does, it's a safety device built in to help keep the water heaters from exploding. Now we haven't had that problem in a long time, but the reason is the way they're manufactured now, they've got a safety device built in. And as long as you hook it up properly and run it out to where it's supposed to be to, guys, these are really safe pieces of equipment. On the TMP, one good thing to do every now and then after you put in a new water heater is open it and flush the water out. And what that does, that keeps the washer inside clean. It keeps calcium and magnesium from building up in there and it'll make your TMP last longer. So guys, I just showed you what's inside of a water heater. If you've been in one and had to change out some of these parts, please leave a comment down below and let me know. If you like these videos or some of the other ones that we've done, please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. That way you don't miss out on anything. I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.